Let me pray. All right. God, we invite you. God, just once again, um, and uh, we pray for your words. God, we pray for your Holy Spirit uh, to help us, God, to draw us deep into your heart, God, into the, to the innermost sanctum of your presence where your zeal and your passion, God, burn the brightest. So we pray that you would radiate the glory of your Son upon us, God. Change us, God. Change our minds. Change my mind, God. Change my behaviors. God, convict me, Lord, um, to move in your purposes, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, uh, in case uh, the new folks are a little tired of me at this point, um, I understand, okay? <laughs> uh, Henry, uh, who normally preaches, or I would say regularly preaches, uh, he's in Korea, uh, and he's coming back. Um, although he did text me, and uh, he's going to be there for two more weeks. So, <laughs> surprise, <laughs> two more weeks of me, all right? And uh, so I appreciate your patience. Uh, so I'm um, going to have to extend the sermon series a little bit. Um, but um, we've been talking about um, intimacy with God. Okay. that even when I talked about this morning, that God is not interested in a casual, distant relationship with his people, with his children. Um, he, he's doing something that is bringing us to the very heart, the very you know, the innermost part of who he is. And uh, we've been going through John 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 uh, in the next two weeks. It's, it's, some people call it the upper room. It's, it's the week leading into Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection. And he spends that time, those five, six days or so, with his disciples. Um, there's something, you know, just very intimate about his, his interactions. He's revealing more about his heart, Jesus' heart and his intentions with the disciples, with us. Okay. So, Chris, um, I, I put this later in the slide deck, but maybe we could start with it. Uh, the, the, it's a quote from Lord of the Rings, okay? The Fellowship of the Ring, it's the first book. Uh, I haven't read it, by the way. <laughs> I've, only, I've read like the first third of it, okay? Uh, it's really dense, I can't read that. Uh, but the movies are great, so read, uh, watch the movies. Um, but I was you know, flipping through it and, and, and uh, saw this quote. And this is like the second chapter it's when uh, Gandalf, the, uh, he shows up, and uh, he shows up to uh, Frodo, and, um, and he, he basically is saying, before I read the quote, he says, you've been chosen, okay? You've been marked. Um, you didn't ask for it. You didn't. Seek the ring, but the ring found you. And now you are burdened with a great burden to uh, go on this mission to destroy the ring. And uh, this is like, and it's like, I don't know, it's, this is where like, if I were writing it, I'd probably write it in a paragraph, but it's like 10 pages of this dialogue, okay? But, but you know, I'm not J.R.R. Tolkien, okay? He's, he's, uh, he's amazing. So... Um, but let me read one quote, and this is like in the interaction with Frodo and Gandalf, and they're kind of going back and forth, and 
And, and what's happening is Frodo is just having this realization. These waves, like the five stages of grief, are just like rolling over Frodo in his coming to this realization that he must move forward with this mission. He has been marked. Okay. So let me read it. It says, I do really wish to destroy it. I do really wish to destroy the ring, cried Frodo. But I'm not made for perilous quests. I wish I had never seen the ring. Why did it come to me? Why was I chosen? And Gandalf says, such questions cannot be answered, said Gandalf. You may be sure that it was not for any merit that others do not possess, not for power or wisdom at any rate, but you have been chosen. And you must therefore use such strength and heart and wits as you have. Okay. So let's, let's take that, okay? Let's take that uh, idea, okay? And let's use it as a lens as we read John 15. And if you've been a Christian, for some time, you may have read John 15. You may have heard a lot, maybe, or a little about this section of John where Jesus talks about how he's the vine and his father is the vine dresser and we, are, we his children, his disciples, are the branches and he calls us to abide in him, right? We sing that song, abide in me, right? Abide in Christ, all right? So, but... Let, let, so let's hold on to that, this, this, this mission and this journey, this mark that Frodo has been given and the, the, the waves of grief and realization, right, that come over him because he's powerless, you know? Who is this guy, right? And, uh, but I want to use that as a lens as, and let's read John 15, 1 through 17. It's going to be a little long, so bear with me. Uh, I'll break it up as we go through. But let me read John 15, verse 1, okay? This is Jesus talking. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. We talked about this last week, right? There are no such things as independent branches that bear fruit. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Jump to verse 8. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. That's an invitation. Okay? Abide in the love of God. Connect with Christ. Join Him. Right? If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. And this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. And you are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Okay? Jesus chose us. And he marked us and appointed you that you should what? Go and bear fruit. These things I command you so that you will love one another. Um, I, I'll be honest. When I read John 15, you know, time, many times in the past, my bias would lead me to that part about abiding, 
because it's wonderful. What a wonderful invitation of God. God who is God says, come, right? Join me. Connect with me. Be intimate with me. And I talked about that last week, right? You can't be independent. You got to be needy. Branches are needy for the vine. And so my bias would lead me. It's like, oh, it's warm and fuzzy, and God is warm and fuzzy, and, you know, he's inviting us to abide. And it's true. It's true. God is uh, inviting us, right, to connect with him in a very intimate way. But the thing that I did not catch until this past week was that that abiding has a purpose beyond just this, right? Beyond just me connecting with God and being intimate with God. It has that abiding, that invitation to abide has deep and profound meaning. John 15, 16, Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Daniel, I chose you. Nate, I chose you. Right? Katie, I chose you. And appointed you. I appointed you into a position with responsibility and duty. Right? People are appointed. Right? That's an interesting verb. He not only chose us, But he appointed us for what? To go and bear fruit. The whole purpose of John 15, 1 through 17, the whole point is bearing fruit. Bearing fruit for God. Bearing fruit for God's kingdom. That's why... You were chosen. So if you are a Christian and you claim to be a Christian and you have not bared fruit for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, I don't know what that means. Because the very purpose by which Jesus chose us is to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. Be a city on a hill, right? Don't put the light under the, you know, under a bowl or whatever he says, right? Go and shine bright. Bear fruit for the kingdom of God. John 15, 2. And I'm just going to, I'm going to rehash it, right? Like just a couple verses Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. God, the, vine dre- the Father, the vine dresser. But every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it. <laughs> Pruning is injuring, actually, right? He cuts. Well, we can talk about that another time. But he cuts. And we talked about that last week. What you think is evil, God is like, you know, he's, he's, he's perfect. He's cutting and he's injuring so that it may bear more fruit. The purpose is the fruit, okay? John fifteen five. I'm the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him Whoever abides and connects and remains in Jesus Christ in the intimacy of the deep, holy presence of God, he it is that bears fruit. John 15, 8. By this my Father is glorified. God is worshipped when we bear fruit and prove to be his disciples. 
So the light is not like the bearing of the fruit is not to show how great the branches are. The bearing of the fruit is to glorify the vine and the vine dresser. So if you have a, a branch that's not bearing fruit, does that glorify the Father? So we've got to take a minute to, to define, well, what does that mean? What does that mean to bear fruit? I mean, you might have some idea about what that means. But fruit, being fruitful, it's like abundance, right? It's like multiplication. It's like, it's like bounty. Mark 4.20. But those that were sown on the good soil, this is the parable of the four soils, right? The, the road the rocky, the thorny, and then the good. But those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept the word and bear fruit. Thirty-fold, sixty-fold, a hundred-fold. If I had some secret knowledge, and I don't, okay? If I had some secret knowledge about the stock market or some investment, okay? And I said, it's going to get you 30, 60, it's going to get you 100x. You put in $1,000, it's going to give you $10,000. You put in $10,000? No, no, 100x, 100, I'm sorry, 1,000 is 100,000. You put in $1,000, you got $100,000. Sorry, I added one zero, not two, okay? You put in $100,000, it's going to give you $10 million, okay? Thank God I did the math beforehand, right? 10, you know, like fruit. Jesus describes good so seeds in good soil as a 30, 60, 100x. Okay. And, and this is not me guilt tripping, okay? Please understand that. Please understand this is not guilt tripping, okay? This is God's promise. You might feel like 1.2x right now, <laughs> right? You might feel like your life is 1.1, 1.2x, right? 1.5x, 2x, like two times, five times, 10 times, you know? This is a command and an invitation. Go and be fruitful for the glory of God. 100x. And he's doing that, okay? He's doing it. That's a promise. And thus he says, abide in the vine. Abide in me. Apart from me, you can't do anything. You were chosen to go bear fruit. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you with great responsibility. Right? I was going to use a bunch of superhero quotes, right, from Captain America and Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility, says Uncle Ben, Right? You have a great power. You have a great power in the vine. You have supernatural, extraordinary power to love and forgive. That's what it means to bear fruit, because that's what Jesus says, okay? John 15, 9 through 12. As the Father has loved Jesus... So I, Jesus has loved us. Do you see the flow down? The love that the Father has for the Son, and this is repeated in John 17, which we'll get to in two weeks, 
the, the love of the Father flows down to the Son, and the love that the Son gets from the Father, He gives to us. And then He invites us into that love. Holy Trinitarian love that existed before the earth existed. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three in one. I don't really understand it. I'm just going to be honest. How are they three in one at the same time? Doesn't make sense. Not human sense. But there's something so intimate about the three that they're so one that you can't say that they're three or one. Right? It's three in one. Abide. Jesus is inviting us to abide in that love. And then he says something interesting. <laughs> and this is the thing that kind of flipped it for me. Right after that, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. That love is not just for yourself. Right? You've been marked. You've been chosen to go bear fruit. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So the love from the Father comes to the Son. The love from the Son comes to us. And this is the mission. This is the hard part, okay? This is the thing that we can't do unless you're connected to the vine. That love goes to others. Go and love one another with that holy Trinitarian love. And the point of John 1, 15, 1 through 17 is that. We were chosen to go bear that fruit. 30, 60, 100 fold. And that's both a command and an invitation. So I, I hope you feel not just the five stages of grief like Frodo, right? I felt that way. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, like just the waves of, that's a lot, you know? Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We'll read that later. We'll eventually, hopefully, get there in our adult Bible study. It's in Galatians 6. Maybe we'll get there in six months. I don't know, right? But we'll eventually get there. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Love one another. A new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. Right? All of these commands to love like God loves. And it is, it, is, it is a command, but it's also an invitation. God chose you to be that person. He marked you and me so that our lives have a purpose on this earth to, to grow in that to be more like Christ, to glorify the Father. And, and, I, and I think you see it, right? This is, this is why I appreciate and I really enjoy when we share testimony It, whether it's in your growth groups or, or home groups and, um, or at church or when we do baptisms or when we do membership induction. I, I wrote this in my notes. I don't know why. I mean, when Nate was sharing, was it last week or two weeks ago, about his brother, 
And, and I know his brother, by the way, or decently know his brother. Uh, and I knew the pre-Christian and the post-Christian brother, okay? And the story about how his brother, you know, he got into a fight with his dad. And then he went back to the, his dad's house the next day to apologize. And his dad was like, you know, was upset, waved him off. Then he went the second time. His dad kind of, you know, was upset and waved him off. And then he went back a third day. And his dad kind of was still upset. Waved, and then he went back a fourth day. Who does that? I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't do that. I don't, I, actually, I don't know. I don't think I would, you know. And so it was both a blessing but also a conviction. And I, felt, I just felt like I needed to repent after I heard that story. I said, God, there is an uncommon, holy, Trinitarian love, right, that is available to us when we abide in the vine. And so we got to think tactically, like, like at work or at home, and you got to get specific with your kids and your spouse and your parents, and you got you to wrestle those feelings down that you feel so justified and you feel so hurt and you got to connect with God and the vine and say, God, I, I need the love of the Father. I need to be overwhelmed by the love of the Father so I can go and do uncommon things for undeserving people. You were marked. You were chosen. Right? We were chosen for that. And the amazing thing is, God says, this is how my father is glorified. You, you want to ask a theological question about how is God exalted? If God exists to glorify God and enjoy God forever, if that is his very purpose, how is God glorified? How is God lifted high? How is God worshipped? and enjoyed, how is God made worthy and beautiful? When we bear fruit like that. Because it shows the world that it's not just from you, it's from the vine. So let me close and let me exhort us and encourage us, okay? Let's not do casual, okay? Let's not do, and, and I'm so guilty of this, okay? So please don't uh, take this the wrong way. Let's, let's commit to more than casual. Let's commit to more than ordinary. In the big things and the little things. This is going to sound really silly, but you know one thing I'm trying to get better at? Texting people. <laughs> texting people, number one, when they text me, texting them back quickly. Because I, I have like just a ton of unread messages in my... Uh, and, and also proactively texting people. And now that I'm saying it out loud, I feel like I'm going to be held accountable, right? So, okay, I'm going to go home and text everyone here, okay? <laughs> but it, it's so small, right? And I'm not saying, you know, like, I'm not saying, like, you know, like, we're going to move mountains here with texting, right? But what I'm saying is, even in the little things, let's be extraordinary in our love. If you want to host someone, Let's make it special. You know, if you're going to take someone out for their birthday, let's, let's, let's do it the right way. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to serve someone, let's, let's really get at it, you know. If you're going to try to reconcile with someone or reconcile with someone at work or whatever, you know, like, let's make it meaningful, right? Let's, let's do it special because... The definition of holy is uncommon. 
extra, extraordinary. So when Jesus says, you know, be holy as I am holy, it's an invitation to bear fruit for the kingdom of God, to glorify God, to worship God, to exalt God, right? to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. That is our spiritual act of worship. Okay. So let's pray. Let's pray together. And uh, let me invite uh, the praise team to come up and uh, let's, let's take a moment. Let's take a few minutes and Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I chose each and every one of you and appointed you with great blessing and responsibility, great duties and roles to bear fruit for the kingdom of God, for his glory. So let's, let's come and let's, let's be specific in our prayers to God. Let's, let's ask God for his help, right? This is not a man-made effort, okay? This is an overflow from the Spirit of God and the love of God. You cannot give what you do not have. So we must abide and connect with God. So let's start there. Say, God, we're so needy for you, God. It's so easy for us to get through the days ignoring you, God, and just running on fumes. Let's ask God for more of him. But let's not stop there. But let's say, God, because we want to bear fruit and love one another as you have loved us, God. That's the purpose of abiding. Let's pray.